Prusha XL's under extruding randomly, updates from fails from last week, and prints so unbelievably heinous that because I was exposed to it, I'm exposing it to you too. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 141. Let's get into it. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, you're having trouble getting your 3D printers printing right, we are here to help. You can reach out to us on all the social medias. Links are on screen and down below as well so that we can help you getting your printers back to printing with purpose. We're starting off today with my buddy Joe 3D Printy, who we just released our interview from Rocky Mountain Rep Rap. We'll card to that video so you guys can take a look if you do want to actually see what 3D Printy looks like and uh, get to know the man behind the projects just a little bit more. Joe says, I have no idea what caused the marble filament to clog, but the attempted recovery by the brick red layers is truly impressive. I was printing on the cooler end of the recommended temp range, so I'll bump it up a bit and send again. Model is the Lunar Lighthouse Puzzle Box by 3D Printy. We can see that the actual regular marble itself clogged, and then the, well, brick red marble color did pretty darn good. Like, I'm impressed as well. That's really, really good on the overhang performance. And we can see that in addition to bumping up the print temp, he also raised the stakes with six lighthouses instead of five, and the gamble paid off. It's the thing with marble filament. It's got those little dots of color in it, and those can have a tendency to jam print heads. Often when you're printing a marble filament or any kind of filled filament, in my opinion, I like to be on the upper end of the temp scale. With PLA, there's really only a couple of things that could go wrong by giving it a little more temperature than it might particularly want. One, it's going to string a little bit, but a quick, you know, hit from a butane torch or a propane torch will solve that problem. Or two, it could be a little bit shinier than you're expecting, and you'll be able to catch that pretty early on in the print, decide if you want to let it go, or start it over, because lowering the temp is just going to give you a gradient of shininess in the print, and nobody likes the way that looks. We have found that over time, some marble filaments can cause clogs more than others, and specifically, I've seen it in the CHT style nozzles, where it will clog just one of the paths for the filament. Traditionally, the CHT style nozzles, like even the bamboo one from E3D, they'll have three or four channels for the filament to go through as it gets split up to get more heat. Well, one or two or all of them can actually end up clogging, and it can be a bit of a nightmare to get the clogs out. Now, we have not particularly had that problem yet, but would recommend if you are going to be using some marble or filled filaments that you do look to go up to a 0.6 nozzle where you can and if you are running some sort of high flow variant cut that one down to the regular variant i understand that it's going to slow your prints down a little bit but that's just the way it goes in my opinion and i would much rather see the print take a little bit longer time than to well see this so still impressive recovery by the printer and it would probably end up actually looking okay at the end of the day. A little bit of extra heat can go a long way. Next up, a fail from Steven Lyons, who tagged us on social media, like we said that you guys can do. He said, hi, Grant. This is Wexter's Jar Jar Binks bust that was printed in Polyalchemy Elixir Merlot. Sir, you are a man of class because that is a classy model for a classy color that is no longer available. If you have a failure in that color, you can't just go buy more of it yet. Printed Solid is working on it. In fact, we made our own elixir. This is this is the color that we made when we were at Printed Solid. This is, like, technically, this is real polyalchemy elixir because it used the elixir colorant. But uh, I still think this should be called uh, Jesse Silver Fox. What do you guys think? But if you do want to see what it takes to make filament just like this, card to that video so you guys can take a look it is super fun crazy in depth if you want to learn all about how filament is made and specifically shiny filament that is a great video that i think you guys will enjoy but they're printing at 25 millimeters a second on a sidewinder x2 that's an artillery printer when the 0.4 millimeter nozzle looked all great while printing but after finishing you notice some odd layer lines in the second pick any ideas why I'm stumped. I asked some of the basic questions here, uh, specifically around 
is it on all of the sides or is it just on one side? I believe the X2 is a bed slinger, specifically a V-wheel bed slinger. I'm not 100% certain. I don't own one, so if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But if that's the case, those V-wheels can get a little wiggly and you might see some deviation in the part. Unfortunately, it's on all sides, according to Steven. It's either we had some extrusion issues from larger diameter filament or something is wobbly in the carriage. I could be wrong. Apparently, Victoria decided she wanted to be back in the shot, so here we are. I don't know if it's from wobbly carriages or something, or maybe it's from just filament diameter inconsistencies, but in my experience with Polyalchemy Elixir, I have not seen it to have that much deviation to where you can see that kind of damage on the print. There is something to note, though. It could be lighting-based. Now, I don't think that we have lighting here that is going to make this more pronounced. And certainly, you can see it on the edge image here. So it's definitely something going on with either extrusion or a wobbling in the carriage. We can see here that Gregory says that the zigzag and the shift happening in all directions seems to be an issue with the flow and so the extruder check that the main hob gear is tight the secondary hob gear is rotating freely and the extruder motor cables are not damaged and the ptfe and hob gears are clean and normally i would agree with this but traditionally it's not just gonna randomly over extrude if any of those are an issue it's gonna under extrude I, I'm not saying that Gregory is wrong here. It certainly could be that. I guess I've never personally seen it over extrude. I'd love to know what you guys think here. Mike Roberts was going after like an ambient temp change thing to cause the material to expand or contract a little bit more than normal. I think you'd have to have a pretty serious temperature swing to see that. And certainly because this, this part is relatively small, those shifts are happening like within 10 seconds or 15 seconds of each other. It's not like you're talking 20, 30, 40, 40 minutes where you could have a pretty serious temperature swing. I don't believe that we ever got a update on this one, so I don't know if it was ever fixed. This could also just be silk filament being silk filament. With the way that silks are made, and traditionally it is a TPU mixed into the PLA to give it that extra shine, you can get some variance here. And especially if your mix goes heavy on the TPU or heavy on the PLA, we might see some inconsistencies in the actual extrusion that has nothing to do with the diameter of filament itself. Love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. Next up is my buddy Extrutim, who is uh, having some XL woes similar to 3D Printy. Does anybody know what's going on? I've had this kind of issue with my Prusa XL in the past, but only with single lines. It looks like the perimeter is taking a shortcut. There is no sign of it in the G-code at 3D Musketeers. Maybe this is something for your Print Fix Friday. It absolutely is. Thanks for sending it. And I asked him to send me the 3MF and G-code so that I can dig into it. And ultimately, before I had time to dig into it, we already figured out the issue. And uh, look at that. Gregory in here once again, who I really actually had some great opinion here and said, hey, you might be printing too cold. This is a great thing to think about when you're printing with PETG that has a tendency to shrink quite a bit. That if you're printing too cold, it has a tendency not to stick to itself and instead just get dragged along. And he picked that up by noticing that the part was pretty matte. And that is a phenomenal eye. Good job on that. And while it is a matte PETG, that additive can certainly have an issue when you're looking to print. For us, we find that we need to print PETG considerably hotter than the stock temps on the Prusa XL, especially when we're looking at the input shaper profiles. But yeah, you can see this happened on multiple layers here. What we ended up finding out is after a test, reducing the flow rate from nine and a half to seven cubic millimeters a second, the print was perfect. And so he said, maybe it doesn't really like getting printed fast. However, this has already happened sporadically with PLA below the max flow rate. It remains odd and tagging us. I said, you can crank up attempts too. I find the XL at 260 is a happy starting point for PETG. I like to give my filament a little bit of extra heat, especially when we're going to be running the input shaper profiles. Seven cubic millimeters a second is pretty slow for a XL, but with a material that 
has additives to it, not knowing what that additive package looks like, that could absolutely contribute to more difficult flow for the filament itself. I would love to do a deep dive on these additive packages, but we don't possess the equipment to do it. So if you happen to have access to a laser mass spectrometer, that would be amazing and would be something that we would absolutely want to take a look at and be able to test tons of different companies' filaments and be able to see what is actually going into these additive packages to make it print better, print matte, whatever it might be, because they don't normally tell you in their technical data sheets. And especially when we're printing for clients, we really want to make sure that we're using materials that we can rely on. And when it comes to stuff that's like matte or whatever, I'd rather use regular materials, cut my temps down a little bit to get a matte finish or bring my temps up to get more of a shine on it. Next up, a follow-up from last week where we talked about Omaha 3D Prints and his issue with his Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, where it wasn't getting the Z offset correct. Something wasn't right. We can see here that he did update us, stating that it's printing, so no need to swap the sensors or anything. Thank God. I bought him down the bed, and that seemed to resolve the issues of the printing distance. However, there are still some pretty bad issues with extrusion. I thought I'd previously changed the extruder on this one, but it might have been on the other one. This still had the original silicone from the factory on it. This was my Kickstarter machine. That's like a two-year-old machine. So it's on the original everything except for the cable that they had to replace a while back. I went ahead and changed the filament cutter too since I hadn't ever done that either. Hey, when you're in there, go ahead and do it. Yeah, that extruder has seen some days, and in fact, those teeth on the extruder look a little damaged. We use dental picks, actually, when we're cleaning out extruders, when you get like a filament grind issue where the gears on the hob itself get clogged up with filament. We just use a dental pick to clean it all out. It seems to work pretty well. You can also use like a brass brush. Uh, can sometimes get those out as well. But this is why we always talk about having spare parts on hand. It's a simple swap, and... With the way that Bamboo's built the extruder, if you know what you're doing, you can replace an extruder in less than five minutes, which is not bad at all. Next up, prints so heinous that they were shared with me, and therefore I must share them with you. You're welcome. This comes from Discord member Devoid Colossus, who is firmly set on making sure that everyone just has a more terrible day. And while we say that this is Print Fix Friday, the OGs will remember that this series was originally titled Print Fail Friday. And, well, this is absolutely a fail in my book. This just upsets me. And, you know, Greg, Devoid Colossus' name, uh, decided to just go to the next level and print a thick fork for it. And, well, hey, we like a little bit of thickness around here, all right? We're down with the thickness. <laughs> I'm not down with mugs being stuck together like this. And... Well, if you too would like to upset your friends, the models are available on printables. And uh, there is the uncomfortable mug as well that just puts the handle at a 90 degree offset from what's normal. You know, if you're just trying to upset people, go forth and be a menace. Last but not least, we have a fail from the 3D printing subreddit saying small holes in 3d prints hi i have recently tightened my z-axis screw and after printing again i encountered the issue in the picture i tried to recalibrate my flow rate and bed leveling but both doesn't seem to fix the issue has anybody encountered it before and knows how to fix it thanks in advance my god you need to clean your bed it is way too close and you've got to clean the bed none of that is sticking I, I, I think they might have just been touching the build plate constantly. And apparently it is mostly Z offset. I would certainly look at making sure that you set your Z offset right. We covered this in a video. We'll card to it so you can take a look. But the other part of it is bed prep. Maybe we should do a video on bed prep. Because I feel like learning how to make your bed is as important as knowing how to put parts on it. But if you have any tips or tricks that you would like us to show on the channel please leave them in those comments below because it does help a lot and a huge thank you to all of the tricks whose names are listed right next to me at the five dollar tier higher because of course that's gonna be the segue that i use to thank all of our channel member supporters yep 
whatever, I'm here for it. And if you do want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel, you can do so by clicking those links in that description down below, leaving a like on the video, subscribing, and of course, sharing it with friends. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series, where you can see over 140 videos of looking at print failures and how we fix them. And next to that will be our coverage of Rocky Mountain Rep Rap 2024, which is still ongoing. We have so much content to show you guys from that show and a ton of behind the scenes content as well that will be going up for our paid members. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Good one. And a huge thank to all the... Tr <laughs> and who... Nope.